I want to spend a few minutes to discuss a very infamous backend HTTP error by the code 502, bad gateway. This is a very, very common backend error that you get back on your frontend app. You get it, you see it all the time. Nginx throws this error every time there is something wrong on the backend, right? And um, it, it gets confusing as when you want to manage your app, it's like, okay, what's going on? What is really bad? What does that mean? Bad gateway. So I want to start with just saying bad gateway as a description is just, it just to me is wrong. It doesn't make, it indicates that the gateway itself, which is the proxy is bad, but that's not really the situation. So in this video, I'm going to go through what, what this really error means and then how Cloudflare actually fixed that HTTP code error by breaking it down into many, many fine grain, uh, explicit HTTP codes that kind of discover exactly what went bad. How about we jump into it, guys? Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. Um, this is the show where we discuss uh, backend technology, software news. Uh, I discuss frontend from time to time. I do some tutorials. But yeah, that's that's it. We talk about backend technologies. We talk about that's the specialty of this channel. So if you like this stuff, make sure to hit that like button and then subscribe for more uh, content. And then check out the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast, kudos. How about we jump into it, guys? All right, so bad gateway, guys, is an error. Let's read the description in in the MDN and the Wikipedia. 542 bad gateway. The server was acting as a gateway or a proxy and received an invalid response from the upstream server. Cannot get any vaguer than that. I don't know if vaguer is a word, but I'm going to use it anyway. But yeah, it's very vague, right? So let, let's explain what, what a gateway really means here. Gateway is, is the generic term of a that encompasses a proxy and a gateway, right? Your router is a gateway which plays at layer three, right? Uh, it plays at the at the IP protocol, right? While the proxy is kind of a gateway, but it plays at a higher layer. No, sorry, it plays at usually it plays at the layer seven, right? It terminates the traffic at that, and then re-transmit the traffic all completely to another server okay so so what can go wrong when you communicate to a proxy or a reverse proxy or a load balancer that's that's where we throw these reverse proxies at like a gateway as so when you communicate to a reverse proxy or a load balancer that turns around by itself it cannot fulfill your request most of the time it needs to connect to a back-end server, a web server, an API, another API gateway perhaps, or some other thing, right? To In order to fulfill your request. In that communication between itself and the back-end, something went wrong. And that is the generic error that is returned when something went wrong. Back, get, back gateway. So, what can go wrong in that communication? Oh boy, so many things can go wrong. So many things can go wrong. First of all, when you configure your backend, especially your, your reverse proxy, to have a set of list of backends, right? Especially if it's, you have a load balancer, you're going to have a list, right? And how do you specify this? You can either use the IP addresses or, or actual named server, right? If you use names, that means you need DNS. Here's the first error that you can get. What if the DNS query to get back the IP address so I can communicate to this backend server failed? Guess what? Bad gateway. What if the DNS query to get the IP address actually succeeds? And I, I have an IP address. But now, I want to communicate, I want to establish a TCP connection. I want to do a three-way three beautiful, three-way handshake. But I can't because the server, for some reason, is not reachable. I tried to, to do a send and it didn't reply. So yeah, I have an IP address, but I, the server, the dang server is down. 
I couldn't even establish the TCP connection. That's a different error. What do we return? Bad gateway. <laughs> what if I was able to establish a TCP connection to the backend? I was, I was successful in establishing the TCP connection, but when I tried to do the TLS, I want, of course, we, we're also encrypted in the backend, especially in the cloud architecture, right? I wanted to do the, the, the TLS handshake, whether 1.2 or 1.3, but that failed for some reason or another, right? I couldn't negotiate. And th just the TLS failures, there are thousands of errors there. I'm maybe exaggerating, but you get the idea, right? I don't know. The, the server doesn't support the, the certain extensions, the TLS extensions, the, uh, the ciphers that I proposed as a client. In this case, the gateway is the client. The proxy is the client. It's not supported by the, by the backend. I don't know what other things that TLS can go wrong. Things, things can go I don't know. The, the certificate of the server is invalid. That's another error. That's a very common error, right? I try to validate the certificate that I received from the server and I, I went wrong. So the TLS handshake itself could fail, right? So any, anything can fail on the back end, right? So that's another thing. But what if the DNS succeeds? I got an IP address. I established the TCP connection. I got back a beautiful uh, TCP connection. I also established successfully a TLS handshake. Check, check. Beautiful. But now, when I sent a request, an HTTP GET request that the client actually sent me, I sent it to the server, and the server just returned garbage. I don't know. It's just free. the server freaked out. I don't know. Maybe the server is not really an HTTP server. Maybe the server is 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 a Postgres database, and you sent it an HTTP server. It's like what? Postgres is like what? What? What the heck is this? That's not that's not that's not a Postgres connection request. Eh, that's not a SQL, babe. That's not a SQL. Don't send me HTTP request claiming it to be a SQL. So technically, you can do that if you want to, right? But what will happen? Postgres will say, "Well, it will just reset the connection altogether, right?" Most most uh, data uh, servers do that. It's like if, if we receive a bad request, sometimes it says, "Hey, bad request," and it blames you. Right, that's the four four hundred series HTTP code. But sometimes they say, "Hey, it's, uh, I, I'm I'm too old for this stuff." <laughs> Close it. Right. So that's another possible. It's a bad response. What do we return? <laughs> five four two. <laughs> How can you possibly debug a backend if you return one single thing? Right. It's impossible. You cannot possibly do that, right? That is why I like Cloudflare, what they did with the HTTP. They, they just invented their own HTTP error codes in the 500 series. You can do this yourself. You can build a web server and just you know, use the 500 series. Anything that is 500 is basically a backend error. It's a server error. It's not your fault as a client. It's just the server. So now you can do that. Let's, let's jump into the Cloudflare list here. I have a list here. Beautiful, beautiful list. So when, when the first error, 520. Web server returned an unknown error. The origin server returned an empty, unknown, or unexplained response to Cloudflare. So now think of Cloudflare as a reverse proxy in this case that communicate to your website, right? And, 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 and it failed, right? You, you returned an, an invalid response. That's the Postgres example, right? You're trying to send an HTTP request to a Postgres database server, for example. It's just invalid response. Or even HTTP web server. That sometimes it returns bad requests. Sometimes you 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 request, you, you I don't know, you're sending an HTTP 1.1 request to an HTTP 2 connection. Does that make sense? Right? So it's like, hey, what is going on? Right? That, that, that's not the format in, in wire format. It's a completely different, right? Sometimes you do that. that. Another error. 521 web server is down. Um, occurs when the origin web server refuses the connection from Cloudflare. So that's that's what I talked about. So I have an IP address. I tried to connect. I couldn't even establish a beautiful TCP connection, right? Or a quick connection.
connection timeout actually this is not fair connection timeout. there is an an existing gateway timeout uh there, there is a there is i think gateway timeout error yeah timeout is a different story because that we can spend another episode just talking about timeouts. So let's 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 isolate. Let's make this about just errors, right? So yeah, there is an actually an HTTP gateway timeout, right? So er origin is unreachable. That's in five two three. Cloudflare could not reach the origin server. For example, if the DNS record of their origin server is just incorrect, hey, I couldn't even do a DNS on this damn thing. I couldn't find the IP address for this DNS that you that you provided to me. What's going on? SSL handshake failed. So this is error 525. Cloudflare could not negotiate an SSL TLS handshake with the original service. Okay, I was, I was about to do that. I established a TCP connection with your server, but I couldn't even do the TLS handshake. You told me when you configured me at the backend, you told me that this, the backend supports TLS. But apparently it doesn't. That's another, by the way, an error I didn't mention, right? The backend just doesn't support TLS, but you try to TLS it. There's no TLS anything there. It doesn't know how to talk TLS. It doesn't have OpenSSL or LibreSSL or any library that talk TLS, right? Invalid SSL certificate, error 526. That's another good error, right? You need Cloudflare could not validate the SSL certificate on the original web server, right? So you, you can't even... Hey, I, I tried to validate your backend, but I couldn't because it returned a bad and valid certificate. Nasty stuff, isn't it? So yeah, guys, 542, bad gateway is a bad error. Because I wouldn't blame the gateway, right? It's not really a bad gateway. It's a bad server. You're a good gateway. Your gateway is good. The gateway is very good. It's just the server that is bad. It's just a back end. It's a bad back end, right? But your server, your gateway, your beautiful proxy is good, right? So yeah, guys, that was a short episode talking about just the 502 bad gateway. If you get this error, it could be any any of these of the above. That's why back end debugging, when I talk about troubleshooting, it's an art. It's art. Troubleshooting on the back end is art. So SREs out there, uh, service reliability engineers i love you guys you guys are awesome because this thing is really tough it's an art to kind of what can go wrong because there's so many things that can go wrong on the back end just identifying what is wrong is really important and maybe if you think about it let's think about it a little bit maybe leaking this low level errors back to the client is is a double edged sword let let me let me let me tell you what I, what I what I mean by that if you tell me that oh the ssl is bad this oh there's a tcp connection i couldn't i couldn't do that i couldn't do that some security engineers will look at you and says uh, you might don't want to do that you might don't want to do that because you're leaking information about your back end. And uh, if, if there is anything security engineering hate is, is, is any knowledge about anything. Knowledge, Tyler Pez, right? You don't give knowledge to the client about anything. You try to be um, as ambiguous as possible. But I'm torn, man. You got you gotta tell me what how my backend is doing. You can't just don't tell me anything. Give me a configuration that I can turn on so I can get this beautiful fine grain. And you can obviously uh because it's, it saves you a lot of time, man. I mean, I don't know some some of you will say, Hussein, there's there there is this invention that is called uh, uh uh logging that you can log and monitor your backend. What's wrong with you? I agree with you, of course. There's monitoring and logging, but it would be nice, right? Isn't it? If if the server just say, hey, here's what's wrong with me. You have built a badass server. A badass proxy. Shout out to all the proxies, by the way. 
all the proxies, man. You guys are doing fantastic jobs. All the pro proxy maintainers, DJ Proxy, Nginx, Envoy, Traffic, Caddy. What else? What did we forget? Apache. And 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 uh, yeah, so many, so many beautiful proxies. It's a, it's a tough job. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. What do you think about this? Should we? Do you prefer the ambiguous 502 bad gateway, or do you really like this fine grain breakout of what exactly went wrong? And you might say, yeah. So who cares? It's like, yeah. What information can a hacker get if if, he, if they know that your backend doesn't support TLS or you got an invalid certificate? I don't know. It will help us pinpoint errors quickly, maybe. Yeah, I'm a little bit torn on this one, but I I kind of lean towards the fine level of breaking down. I would love I would love to hear your opinion, though, guys. Let me let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you in the next one. This has been the Back in Engineer Show with your host Hussein. Also, make sure to subscribe, like this content, share it with your uh, colleagues, friends. And uh, I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.